Hello friends and fellow gamers, MKX Jump here. Today we're going to be hopping into Idle Heroes and checking out this week's brand new Imps Adventure event. It's pretty cool, we've got ourselves a Soul Awakening session so whales can sink their teeth into a big competition to see who can get themselves a new A, S or probably just a B tier hero. And on top of that guys, we do have some pretty cool packages, some extra bonus rewards for free to play players. I'll give you some advice for how free to play players should approach this week. And as well, we've got something new on the horizon. So we'll take a look at what I think that might be. Although honestly, I'm not too sure. Either way, let's jump in and take a look at this stuff. But before we do, let me tell you about Patreon, a way that you can support my channel financially and get a few small rewards in return for yourself. If you're interested, you can find a link up there in the top corner of the screen. And by doing so, you will get yourself access to privileges on our Discord, including account reviews, which we do on Tuesday. So if you want some one-to-one -one advice with me, where you show me some parts about your account and ask some questions, that's your opportunity to join us on a Tuesday through our Discord server and Twitch by backing me on Patreon. This week's new patron is 74, so thank you, my friend, for that. And if you do want to go ahead and get account reviews, do join us on a Tuesday. Anyway, let's go check out this week's event for Idle Heroes. So this week's campaign loot drop currency is a blue hat jellyfish, which is pretty cute. I like what they've done with him. Even though jellyfish don't typically have eyeballs like this, it's kind of cool to see him with them. Very nice. We also get four dice, which can be used in Imp's Adventure. You have to use them this week. And if you do not use a dice, you will get two points at the end of the event in Imp's Adventure, which can actually be quite useful for making progress. And it's good when you need to gamble, like maybe you need to roll a five or a six and you only need two more stars. Saving a dice can be pretty smart. Also, Force War is returning, so make sure you go ahead and sign up with your guildies, or just sign up in general, whatever works best for you, but go ahead and sign up, my guys. It's a good thing to do. Anyway, we've got ourselves an event here. It's the Soul Awakening Session, of course, the big competition between all the whales. The ranking phase ends at the end of this week. Do not be confused by the timer there. That's just going to be for the leaderboard at the end. Currently, there's no rankings, which means no one has actually done anything here when it comes to Awakens, and the competition will begin with people chasing to get SS, S, A plus stones, and the people at the top of the list will of course get the best rewards, although it's only the top 20 that will get themselves an A minus or higher. Big gamble, honestly, I uh, really question the appeal in all of this, but of course Sometimes you can get yourself something cheaper than it would be on the market if you are going to spend a ton on Awakens. It's all to do with how many points you get, though, in a Soul Awakening Gala. In a Soul Awakening Gala, you get points for getting Awakens on Heroes this week. More points are given the higher the Awakening grade you obtain. If you make your way all the way up to 20, you'll get a little chest here. And just getting 20 in general will get you another one of those chests as well. For 40, you get this one, which contains some of the newer Transcendence Heroes. And this chest here for 70 is going to get you everyone except for Alomac. If you get to 100, though, you do get yourself an Artifact Chest. And that's one of the things to aim for here. And finally, 150 will get you some Sublimation. So if you're looking to maximize this and you're a free to play player with some contract story gems probably around 2000 is a safe point i would go in chasing this then do try and get all the way up to the essence sublimation some people will want to get to 200 because 200 points gets you ranked and those 200 points as you can see with pan hunter here who's just got to 201 puts you on the leaderboard doesn't matter where you are on the leaderboard if you just get on it in general by getting 200 points you get yourself a b minus awakening crystal very nice. That can be used to get a B minus hero. Although then again, if you're going to do that many awakens, I'd rather just buy a B minus from the marketplace and you can actually choose what its stats are. So yeah, each to their own, I guess. Some people have asked, is this going to crash the market again? I don't expect it will because there's no fancy free to play thing like we saw last time, although it may reduce the price of a few heroes and you will see vessels drop this week because it's the end of Star Expedition. So there will be people trying to sell her after they've used her in the Star Expedition, which is quite common that people do that still whilst her price is quite high right now. So yeah, pretty interesting for those of you interested in some auction house stuff. Anyway, value packages for this week are standard. It contains gems, dice, and they've added the new stuff here, Glorious Relics. They did this last time. It seems like that's more normal for Imp's Adventure. Probably just increases the value of the stuff that you get. The Adventure package here is also really good. It's 10,000 gems, but it's 50 bucks. So you're getting 35 dice for 50 bucks with 200 Universal Crystals. That's quite helpful. And you get double rewards from Imp's Adventure, including the weekly event currency. And you get times three rewards in the Snow Moon privilege, which we'll take a look at in a second. Imp's Adventure, normal as always, roll dice. And when you land on a square, it gets upgraded. If you pass over a Starry Mushroom Hut, you will get the number of Starry Mushrooms depicted in the corner. Obviously, landing on it will level it 
it up, up to level three, where you go from three, then four, then five stars. Acquiring these stars will move you across this tracker here, and you will get the various rewards you see. Most free-to-play players get to the five-star hero chest, which is good for early players looking to get themselves copies of those all-important heroes like Tix, Eloise, and other heroes that you're trying to build as tenants as well. Also, if you double your rewards, you also double the blue hat jellyfish. So that's going to help you in the undersea store this week where you can purchase some bonus rewards. We'll look at that soon. And yeah, it all pretty much seems very, very standard just for a normal imps adventure. The undersea store is just the same as any other campaign loot drop event where you can go ahead and cash in your stuff. Free to play players will expect to get around 2,500 to get themselves an imminent hero selection chest. Also, you can probably get to that without even having to spend any gems on dice. So some people who are free to play have opted out of doing that and not even pushing for the five star hero chest here because that's for free to play players who don't need five star hero chests anymore. Those people will just do the bare minimum and save some gems. So that's an option for you guys out there at home as well if you're one of those people. If you do go and push Imps Adventure though and get some decent stuff to take yourself higher, I would recommend using Universal Crystals to pick up Star Spawn cores because the bonus to get them is only a small amount. You might need maybe 300 Universal Crystals and you'll get yourself a Star Spawn Core 6 or Star Spawn Core 5 to improve your Star Spawns. If you plan on spending money by buying that package, you can probably push yourself to a Glorious Flag or an Artifact Chest if that's what you wanted, but for free-to-play players, I wouldn't recommend pushing that high as that's going to be quite heavy on your Universal Crystals, and I think it's better value as a free-to-play player to use them to obtain Star Spawn materials. If you don't plan on using Universal Crystals though, you can just get the Imminent Hero Selection Chest or even just go for Scrolls or Profit Orbs or whatever takes your fancy, maybe even some Skin Shards to make more legendary skins on your account. Going down, we have Shelter Mission. This is going to require you to get these four heroes from the different factions, and they're pretty good. We've got Seer, who's going to need Roy copies. We've got Azrael, who's going to need Bone Carver four stars to put in here. We've got Vesa here, who's going to need one of the many priests in the Forest faction. And we have Queen, who's going to need Akasha, who is particularly hard to get. Now, the way this works is pretty simple. You just need to have four star copies of these heroes on your account. So we'll do the Akasha one here, for example. So I'm going to get four Akashas on here, and those four caches can go onto this queen and if i go ahead and press accept i'll put those in here put in a five star hero that i don't mind getting rid of let's go with an illyria and we press submit and we got ourselves a copy of queen the armor and the five dice it's really important that you do this because those dice will help you get even further in the imps adventure which means more rewards for you at the end you'll also see we have drake and Russell. Not really worth picking these up as this will use two five stars from their faction and cost 2,000 gems. I think that's a bit of a waste. It's pretty easy to get hero copies these days, so spending gems and doubling down on two five stars seems pretty suboptimal. Soul Awakening Gala we've already spoken about. Soul Contract is a nice way to get contract storage gems, which can help you with Awakening. You're going to need six stars in each of the factions. You can do this once for each one. Even if you're a budget player looking to be quite safe with your food and you don't want to use it, I would still recommend doing this because I really truly believe that getting contract story gems is just super good value and it can help you with galas in the future to get you rewards that you typically wouldn't. Or perhaps it was like the event we had a few weeks ago where actually free-to-play players with contract story gems could buy a very strong package worth 1,250 contract story gems because don't forget guys, you can go ahead and do that in the story gem package purchase area and that actually allowed them to get a sublimation chest which had 90k sublimation materials in. So so sometimes just stockpiling contract story gems is a good idea. So I strongly encourage you guys at home to do that as well. And finally, this thing here, the Snow Moon Treasure Box, you might remember the package triples the points you get for this. But what's really, really cool about this is this is a way for you to get some tiny extra bonus resources. Now, you might think the chest is a bit boring as this is only giving transcendence heroes, but for some people that's useful. You're getting spiritual essence, which is quite nice for newer players because the more spiritual essence you get, you can slowly get closer and closer to being able to complete the glory challenge. Challenges. And then there's Stellar Shards, which of course are pretty good for leveling up heroes. Although the amounts in here really aren't that exciting. So even 100 and 200 points, you'd like to think you can get loads of these. You really can't. You're only getting one point for each ordinary dice used and for every 10 event items consumed. So that's consuming items here in the Undersea Treasures. If you didn't buy the bonus package and you were just going into this as a free-to-play player, you're only realistically going to get to just over 300 points, which means you're going to get each of these ones once and this first one three times. And that's it. 300 points. Now, this last one is an interesting one. It contains a chest that contains Vulcan, Elena, or Alamac, but it actually doesn't contain any of those previously pictured rewards. 
such as Stellar Shards and Master's Toolboxes. Now, Master's Toolbox is the thing I haven't mentioned. This is really, really good for free-to-play players. So even if you were disappointed with the small number of Essence and Stellar Shards, this amount of Master's Toolbox is really helpful for upgrading the Celestial Island. I know for a lot of people, Master's Toolboxes are a struggle, so getting this is nice. Obviously, if you triple the points you get, you're going to get way more stuff from here. So spenders might enjoy a nice boost in Stellar Shards. And of course, those hero chest copies will be very, very useful if you're engaging with the Soul Awakening Gala and looking for copies to awaken. That's all it for this week. Nothing too outstanding for an Imps Adventure event, but I do like the addition of the Soul Awakening Gala and the Soul Awakening Session. And the Snow Moon Treasure Box is a nice touch, even though the rewards are a little small. Master Toolboxes are a big help. Event preview for next week, we have Fantasy Factory, Profit Orbs, and a Heroic Miracle event. Heroic Miracle is giving Mockmen as a reward, Profit Orbs are getting you Freya and Queen as a prize, and then there's this thing here called the Mecha Raid. It says, come save the planet from great dangers in your golden mecha. Strengthen it up, protect the world, and challenge powerful enemies to get rich rewards. Now, we don't know if this is going to become a brand new event that we'll see more often, maybe it's just unique to next week, but it is something we have never ever seen before and it's likely going to give some top rewards such as artifacts sublimation it might even give tickets for the brand new treasure train because we haven't seen dh games implement the treasure train yet as a reward system but it would be really smart if they do so i'm very curious to see what the mecha raid brings but i can't really tell you much else because we really don't know until the event drops next week so if you want to know what next week's event is all about and get some early tips and advice for when it goes live go ahead and hit that subscribe button to make sure you catch next week's event review video but until then guys i'll have to leave you with this event here the imps adventure Thanks for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you think about this event in the comments section down below. And why not guess as to what you think the Mecha Raid might be. See you next time, folks. Happy Island.